Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back here to my channel where I play Plants 2. My name is Nissa and today I'm on the to build this beautiful speedball. I know it's a little bit late, but we have here the Galapagos giant tortoise, the blue footed booby, and the red footed booby. So be ready for me trying not to make any booby jokes. And <laughs> without further ado, if you want to see how we build this or simply just learn more about these beautiful boobies, then please keep watching. Okay guys, and I'm gonna try not to make too many booby jokes today because today we are of course talking about two boobies, but also the Galapagos giant tortoise. However, the blue footed booby and the red footed booby are the two new animals I have not talked about before. So I will focus on them and then maybe we will have a little time to talk more about the Galapagos giant tortoise afterwards, but I make no promises there. And I will just try before I even start about talking about the boobies. Um, I haven't been keeping up to my schedule this week and uh, I just thought I would tell you why. Not Some of you may uh, want to know and some of you may don't care. Um, but yeah, here it is. Uh, I was uh, upgrading my computer, I needed another terabyte, so I wanted to add a SSD, which should take around 20 minutes, so I wanted to do that uh, early before I went live this Tuesday, and the um, thing is, it went swell, it took me two hours to figure out how to do it, and afterwards my computer wouldn't post, uh, so I called my... Uh, computer guy and he was real nice and came the same way and took my computer away so i've been living for days without computer um got it back late last night uh wednesday night that is and then i have been sitting for yeah all last night the rest of last night to 2 a.m and most of today uh thursday just reinstalling everything i lost on it uh, but it works now and we may have fixed a few issues ahead before so maybe i can run things even smoother now so that would be great um <laughs> so yeah i i do apologize for that um but i i think it was yeah i, I really think that was a good decision to to upgrade it even though it gave me a lot of troubles um but it works now and that's the important part <laughs> Anyway, back to the animals for today. Uh, as always, I will link no links to uh, my information for the animals, both boobies and the Galapagos giant tortoise. However, I do not have a lot, a lot of information on the red-footed booby. I have more on blue-footed, uh, but a lot of the facts would be the same the way. Uh, and therefore, I will tell you when it's general booby knowledge and when it's more like this specific booby knowledge um and along with these links as always i also have linked to the mods where you can go and download it and my video where we take a close-up on the mod i think the red-footed booby went up earlier this week and the blue-footed went up last week or the week before so they are still fairly new mods um but if you really want to see a close-up or uh yeah get the mod or anything it's all in the description and i really recommend they're quite cute as you can see here but first of all what is that booby and again we are talking about birds here even keeping it pt here um but both the boo and red for the booby is of course boobies and they are these coastal birds with kind of short legs more compared to a dog uh, than a flamingo for instance they have these beautiful colorations which are a bit different compared to, uh, this, depending on the booby of course here we have blue and red footed so they have blue and red foot beads and uh, they are not like bluish and red is no they are blue and red no question there and it kind of looks like a fake animal because of that um, besides that, they have these more like dog um, shape of a body, but more prominent uh, upward chest. 
where you see the chest go upwards, continuing into the neck, where the dog is more like chest going forward and the head stuck on, or the neck stuck, stuck on top of the head. They also have this very thick neck compared to an other animals, which basically just go up and make a small bit that becomes the head. It doesn't seem, of course, that the boobies have head and neck, um, but the head actually just looks like it's a bend at the top of the neck. They have these very round, uh, pale eyes, and then they have these kind of flat uh, beaks that also are kind of narrow, not like not like needle narrow like some birds, but they are still much more narrow, uh, again, compared to, for instance, a dog or something like that. As many birds do, they split up from other birds much uh, earlier than other animals. Um, or split off from other animals earlier than most animals. Most animals you need to get down in order, family, and there to split them off. But most birds actually have a class, which is avis, so they do not um, belong in the mammalia class like most animals. They have this avis, and if it helps you out, you can think about aviary uh, flying birds. However, not all of them do fly, which is a little side thing. However, uh, the boobies belongs to the Suli Formis order, which include around 60 different coastal birds, which could be the Comormans, it could be the uh, Janet, or it could be the booby, for instance. There's also other birds included here, but these are some of the biggest uh, groups of birds that you may have heard of before unless you really are a bird lover because yes, 60 birds are a lot the family is the Sunidae which only contains uh, the boobies and the Janet uh, but the, here we only have 10 individual species but when we look at the genus this is only the boobies and the boobies are the Zikdaf and uh, they are all called Ula as the first name uh, but for the blue-footed booby, that uh, uh, the full name will be Sula Nibuti, and for the red-footed Sula, it, uh, sorry, the red-footed booby, it is Sula Sula. Uh, we also in the same genus have the brown uh, booby, which is the Sula Leopogasta, and the mask booby called Sula Dactylatra. The Netska booby called Sula Kadi. And lastly, the Peruvian booby called Sula <laughs> Varigata. One fact that clearly jumps to mind when I compare these two boobies we have here, the red footed and the blue footed, is that the red footed live longer. They, on average, live around 23 years where the blue-footed only live on average 17 to 18. A few years different doesn't sound like a lot, but when it these small numbers of years you have, every single year counts. This size also differs between these two subspecies, where the red-footed booby weighs between 900 and 1000 grams, which is 2.2 pounds where the blue-footed booby weighs one and a half kilo being more like a three a three point three point three pounds sorry about that uh, so the blue one is clearly bigger also compared to the length of them the blue-footed one reaches uh, between 81 and 90 centimeters which is roughly three foot uh, where the red-footed one only reaches 64 to 76 centimeters, which would be 15 centimeters different, uh, roughly, uh, and 15 centimeters, that is around, I think, 6 inches. Another clear difference is also, as you can see here, even in the speed build, even though the camera moves fast, there is a color difference, however, the pure white ones is either albinos or babies 
but the ones that are brown on most of the body uh, besides the chest and front of the neck will be the blue footed booby it still have a little brown and a white feathers mixed in on the main part of the back and the back of the neck um, but they are much more brown than the red footed ones that mostly just have brown feathers on the uh, edge of the wings as already mentioned both of these birds are of course coastal animals and because they are dead and they live on these cliff sides of for instance islands or other um, coastal areas um, but they need some kind of rocky or cliff side to actually live in um, but because they fly around in these places where they can be really rough weather we both talk about wind but also like water can technically jump up of the water and attack them because that's how water behaves in these areas. Uh, so therefore they need to be a little heavier, more robust and really agile flyers to kind of not get knocked out of the air when this happens. But because they are these a little more heavier birds and more robust, they also are a little more clumsy when they need to take off, which is something we have heard with other animals and even fantasy animals where we in Game of Thrones universe have talked about Vega, who is really old and have issues getting off the ground. But when she uh, la uh, when she is in the air, she's one of the most deadliest and uh, dragons out there, and a wonderful flyer, one of the best. And that's actually what we see here with the birds. It's not because these are really furious and dangerous, but it's more so that they are really really good in air but not on land uh, and they just need that push to get up there uh, a trait again we also see with penguins that are really, really agile in water but not on land and though these two birds are really much similar they do not inhabit the exact same uh, places uh, where the red-footed booby live in both North America, Asia, South America, and Africa. Um, and I'm not gonna mention every single country because it's a really long list. The blue-footed booby only live in Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, El Salvador, Honduras, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, Peru, and United States, which is only South and North America. Um, they live kind of in the on the uh, side of Asian side of America, if you look at a map, and they're in these coastal regions, which is again islands, Galapagos, for instance, but otherwise the mainland and those coastal regions. Uh, again, Red Footed Booby lives pretty much if you make a belly belt around the, the earth, that's pretty much where they live. Uh, they do still live a little bit in the same biome, but not completely. They both live in uh, coastal areas, of course, and ocean pelagic zones and marine. Um, but there's where it uh, changes a little bit. Uh, sorry, Neresic zone is also the same where the red footed booby also actually live in forest and scrublands. Again, close to the water, but they can actually inhabit these places where the blue footed booby prefer more these rocky areas. They both, however, do still um, only inhabit in the uh, tropical climate zones, which again is nice. They are warm and they are human. Humid, sorry, not human, humid. <laughs> I also just noticed that I can actually hear the bird call on my computer here on this website. I really recommend you go and listen because if you heard these bird calls, you would not think that these birds have anything to do with each other. Where the uh, blue footed booby is more like a really raw uh, kind of whispering sound. The red-footed booby is much more uh, like a dominant voice, a harsher voice, and a louder voice. 
And if you want to compare those two voices yourself, again, link is in the description. Since the blue-footed booby is a, <laughs> again, coastal animal, it helps a lot if you can swim, which a lot of birds cannot. A lot of them will only go to the surface of the water and then try to catch their food there. The boobies will actually swim uh, and dive into the water. Uh, they aren't as good swimmers as they are flyers, but they can still use their flight to help themselves in the water by actually diving for quite height, uh, heights. And the higher you are, the faster you can actually fall down in the water and the faster you hit the water the further down you will actually get pushed down and this can help you swim much faster than you would be able to do otherwise they can swim quite deep however they do not have reason to stay in the water for long uh, besides for hunting keep in mind that when birds go in the ocean they can really really fast change from being the hunter to being the hunted but these hunts they can both do alone or as a couple or as a group activity they travel around in groups which hold about 12 individuals and these groups can be called everything from parties to traps hatch and conquerors and uh, yeah some of those sound better than others so why not call the birds we have here a conquerors However, these hunts are not always between pairs. So females and male uh, boobies normally fish the same way. Uh, but for the blue-footed booby, this is a little different where the males and females don't hunt together or as at the same time of day, which allowed the males and females to raise more than a single young at the time. Because the blue-footed booby is that big and it is a pure coastal animal, it is really hard to move around, therefore do the, they do not migrate. However, looking at the red-footed booby, they actually do migrate and that is both because they are smaller, they are more vulnerable to harsh weather, uh, but it also allowed them basically to move around uh, more away from the coast since the only good thing about the build of the blue-footed booby is that it can take that harsh weather uh, the red-footed one is just more like agile all around flying wise so they do migrate because the size of the red-footed booby they do not dive as well as the blue one therefore they will eat mainly squid and smaller fish species that uh, remain in the uh, top of the water like close to the surface so the red-footed booby only need to like lightly dive where the blue-footed one can dive much deeper especially the females uh, since they are much the, uh, bigger therefore they can go for a lot of different kinds of fish here we for instance have anchovies mackerel flying fish but also like squid and offal which i'm not sure what is but um, they can do that. Again, males are more uh, uh, of the blue for the booby, uh, tends more to have these uh, closer to the surface fish, again, like the red footed booby, because again, the males of the blue for the booby are smaller and their tail end is big compared to their body, therefore, they are not as agile in water as the females are of the blue footed. When it comes to threats, there is a few, but since, again, the red-footed booby lives a lot of places, it's hard to say this specific reason is the same. Of course, the climate change is a danger for every single animal, but the blue-footed booby is still more affected by it than the red-footed. Again, the red-footed migrate, so they can move from place to place if needed and they are more agile to search in on land when it, there's a hurricane or a blizzard not a blizzard what they call a uh, tsunami or anything like that the red footed can like go away and wait till it's over where the blue footed are more stationary and need to be where they are I have a number of the blue footed booby at around 6,423, which is very specific, 
but they also live in a smaller area so they are harder to keep and count on. The red footed one are, I don't have a number on specifically, but it states that locally in areas the numbers are dwindling, but not in a range where we need to be concerned today. Therefore, both of these beautiful boobies are listed as the least concerned animal according to the IUCN red list, which is exactly where we want them. Uh, again, doesn't mean that they will never need our help, it's just need that they, they don't need the most help. Right now we can focus on other animals, but we need to keep them in our minds so we don't need to save them in a few years when they are so suddenly critical and dangerous. Just in general, protect the planet, protect the animals, and we will not end out really bad places. And my last note about the boobies is actually that I finally found a fun fact, which is where the name booby came from. It comes from Spanish, the word bobo, which means stupid or foolish or clown, which explains so much why these birds are called boobies. I sorry, I don't have time to talk about the Gal <laughs> sorry, Galapagos giant tortoise today but I have talked about them a lot before, so I hope you are okay with that for now. Um, I can, if I remember, link a video below where you can go and see about that. Uh, for now, enjoy the cinematics and I will come back afterwards.
Okay guys, that's all I got for you today. As always, I really hope you enjoyed it and you know the drill. Like, subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you know the next time I upload a video. Really hope to see you again. And then in the comments below or in the next video. Bye guys.